In this video, we're going to look at a section of the great poem, the Ars Amatoria, the Amatory Arts, the Art of Love, by the uh, great poet uh, Ovid. Ovid was born in 43 BC, uh, died in AD 17, so lived in amazing times, uh, civil war, and then the uh, rise of the first emperor, Augustus. Um, Ovid was writing and for and mixing with the, the elite, and eventually he comes into uh, a, a sad end in the fact that he, perhaps by writing this poem, which is telling men, particularly, really, how to uh, get hold of women, um, uh, find a partner, uh, and I don't really mean a wife, I mean a lover, uh, he was exiled, perhaps for this poem, he was exiled to Thomas in the Black Sea, or perhaps he might have been involved in another scandal involving the uh, Emperor's only daughter Julia, we don't really know, but uh, love and the problems of love is one of his uh, great uh, themes, uh, he writes about it very very well, in all sorts of ways, um, and this is a great introduction to his work. Uh, this section is uh, talking about uh, what to do when you've written a letter to your beloved and uh, she sends it back and she hasn't even bothered to open it. Uh, it comes after a section in the poem where he gives general advice on how to write a love letter, so that's the wider context of it. Now, the metre of this poem is something called elegiac couplets. You don't really need to know what those are, but uh, generally a couplet means that the sense, the content sense, falls within two lines. These are great things to have uh, when you first start to read Latin poetry because you don't have to go beyond two lines to look for the verb. You can normally find it quite easily. So uh, nice and easy for us to deal with. Um, uh, the example uh, notes that the meter, that is the rhythm of the lines, is generally quite slow. Uh, um, there are lots of doubled consonants which slow the lines down by the way they're pronounced. And this is uh, perhaps that they uh, consider just to kind of to emphasize how difficult it, it, it is uh, to be rejected again and again and have to send a letter again. It's very repetitive, so that's what they think the slow meter is for. Okay, if she won't accept what you've written and sends it back unread, si non accipiet, if she will not accept, uh, the the having been written thing, the scriptum, in lectum, unread, and sends it back. Notice the lovely chiasmus arrangement here, the cross pattern with the two verbs in pink and the unread letter that's at the centre of the uh, non-receiving and the sending back. So the in lectum is a PPP from Lego, and then we're going to have um, a future uh, participle, which is part of a, actually an infinitive, um, in the next line, lecturam, okay, think of the word future, you'll see the T-U-R there and that'll help you realise that's part of a future participle, which is in fact being part of a, uh, an entire, I think, uh, future infinitive lecturum essay. This is a very, in poetry, we often leave parts of verbs out that are not necessary for understanding. We think that they are understood by the reader and so they can be left out. Now we have a pair of um, imperatives, spera, tene, hope that she, that would be am, that she, lecturam, lecturam essay, would read it, will read it, that's what's been left out there, hope that she'll read it, and that um, uh, hold, propositum, hold on to your, your intention they hear, so two infinitives, sorry, two imperatives. We have these, don't we, in the, 
Destina Sinet Tire uh, by uh, Mise Catulle, Destina Sinet Tire, where he talks to himself. We have these imperatives. It's rather like those. Um, okay, so hope, keep hoping, be steadfast. Okay, then we've got two lines, and you can see the, what's going on here with a tempore, tempore. The idea is that if you keep firm, if you don't stop hoping, time will help you. Time will help you break her resolve. Now, that's a bit odd, isn't it? I mean, nowadays we might say, really? No means no? You're a bit of a stalker? It's very difficult to, to deal with this poem and some of its themes. Um, and remember that your reading of it as being, you know, unwanted attention, that's absolutely fine. Or you might read it and think, no, you know, if you love someone, it really is worth hanging on in there and, you know, trying to hope that they will finally give in to you. But that's for you to think about when you write about the poem in a, in a personal response sort of way. Anyway, we have tempore tempore at the beginning of these uh, uh, lines. Um, with time. With time, difficilis uenki, uh, difficult uh, bullocks, a bullock is a, uh, a young bull, um, come to the plough. So eventually with time you'll train an animal. Um, uh, with time, or in time, um, the horses, equi, uh, docenta pati are taught to allow patio to suffer, to allow to bear the uh, lenta frena. Um, lenta, um, obviously, you, you would think of it, especially if you know music, you'll think about lente, lentamente, and things like that in music as slow. So, slow rain sounds a, a bit odd. Um, in the notes to this, the teacher's notes, they suggest that this means sort of long-lasting, so leather, long-lasting leather, well-worn reins, perhaps. Uh, so we're talking about um, cultivating, or well, not cultivating, that's not the right word, but breaking wild animals, bullocks and horses. Now, this is a very, very common and ancient theme, particularly for breaking young females, making them uh, uh, as they become sexually active. So the yuenka, the, the feminine young um, uh, cow, the, the heifer, she's uh, often referred to in Latin poetry as an object of beauty. Um, the Spartans regarded uh, their girls as young female horses, fillies who needed to be broken. So this, and that's in Alkman, that's really ancient poetry, sort of 7th century BC. So these are very common, very frequent, and very ancient metaphors for persevering and breaking the wild spirit of a person. And you're contrast, or you're comparing that to breaking a wild animal. Now, uh, notice the emphatic position of tempore, tempore. Notice the uenki and the equi mirroring each other's placing at the end of the line there. And um, both these lines are um, slightly faster than the previous lines. Uh, um, and that is in contrast to the idea of things taking a long time. So there's a kind of nice play of the pace against the content of these two lines. So the next part of this poem takes us uh, to other ideas of now not animals but hard metals that will soften over time. So there's a, another metaphor for uh, encouraging the reader to keep going 
at the beloved. Keep sending those letters. So we have a, a Ferreus annulus, an iron ring. Now, iron rings, we don't really wear those anymore, uh, but uh, cheap rings in the ancient world were made out of iron, and iron is the hardest metal that they had at the time. So the Ferreus is an emphatic position here. An iron ring. Um, consumator is worn out, they have, is consumed, is eaten with assiduo uso, with continuous use. And uh, that might be the ring that has a pattern on the front which is used as a seal ring in wax to close a letter. So that might be why he chooses to talk about the ring there. But then he returns in the next line to the agricultural or pastoral settings of the of lines three and four and this is the aduncus wamer the crooked plowshare um, a plowshare uh, is narrow and gets wider so it goes into the land breaks it up so the that's why it's crooked the crooked plowshare uh, in territ is ruined and then we have the uh, assidua the same adjective um, uh, as we'd had in the line before, in exactly the same place, but now in the feminine, uh, by continuous, um, and then we've got contact with, which is left out, and then the word for earth, humo, at the end, uh, in the ablative there. So, nicely balanced uh, ideas about uh, metal here, and... and the assiduo assidua in the uh, same position. I had to say I love the plough, the word for plough in the middle of this, the vomer, uh, because it uh, reminds you of the fact that a plough goes right through the middle of a, uh, the ploughshare, goes right through the middle of a furrow and the, the earth comes up on either side of it and you've got the enteric humo on either side of that word womer. So that's like a visual picture of that happening. And then we get a rhetorical question, quid quid. Uh, what is more hard? What is more hard? Saxo, ablative of comparison, than rock. So we've got rock and hard next to one another. What is mollius more soft than water? So we've got these lovely pair of rhetorical questions. Um, we've got the word for soft next to water, the word for hard uh, next to stone. And you can see by the arrangement there, we've got saxo, under, durum, um, mollius. All these words are intermingled with one another in a really satisfying word pattern. I realise now that it, it's annoying that I've put, uh, I've broken up this uh, top line here from it, the, its uh, preceding line because you can see that we've got uh, not only a thematic uh, continuation but also a lexical, that is to do with choice of words, continuation between the previous line. So, uh, however, yet, Tarmen, um, hard rock, Dura Saxa, hard rocks rather, plural, they're uh, neuter are hollowed out, think of concave, and then you'll see that cavanta, by soft water in the ablative there, molly aqua. Just look how clever this is. Uh, we've got now the hard at the beginning uh, of the line, followed by the adjective for soft, which is now next to the word for rock, because rock, even rock, will be softened over time. Uh, even, uh, it's just fantastic. And then we've got the water at the end that does that. So the molly is describing the aqua, but it's next to the word saxa, a great juxtaposition to show that even rock will be softened over time by something soft. So softly, softly, you keep approaching this hard girl, she will come over to you. And, you know, again, that statement, mm, really? Mm, okay, no means no. Anyhow, now we have uh, uh, a nice little end of, of, of this uh, uh, excerpt. 
which goes off to the epic. Um, only stand firm, that's per star, are uh, modo, here meaning only, and we can say that in English, only do this and you'll be okay. So only stand firm, modo per star, and tempore, so that's our tricolon, that's the third time we've had tempore, we've had the time. In time, you will win, you will win over, win case, Penelope herself. So once again, good old Penelope, she appears in our marshal, she appears um, in uh, our art, the absolute uh, iconic chaste wife. Now, of course, the thing is, Penelope never does give in. It's kind of humorous, but he actually says, you know, if you hang on in there, mate, you'll even beat Penelope herself. Well, yeah, so Penelope here in emphatic position. It's a bit of a joke, isn't it? It's hyperbo hyperbolic. Penelope never gives in over 20 years. But hey, just follow this man's advice and you'll, you would even beat Penelope. So it's a great joke. Um, you know, um, we days, you see, you know, seeing for knowing here. You know that um, Pergama, Pergama, uh, the capital, uh, the citadel, that is the, the rocky centre of Troy, um, the citadel of Troy, and here it is standing for Troy as a whole. Troy itself, uh, Troy wa was captured, captor, look at uh, the two captors in this line, uh, Cero over time, a long time, Tamen, but captor, captured it was. So captor, captor, so um, we have hy the hyperbole of the epic, Troy itself fell after 10 years, so hey, this girl's going to give in to you eventually. Uh, you'll know that it will happen. The Tarmen, that last word, it w you know, but it did happen. Hold, uh, hold fast. And that Tarmen picks up on the Tarmen in the line uh, two, in two lines above after the Dura there. So you've got the Capta Capta. Um, so the female is like a city that can be, see be besieged. She will be captured though. And again, you may rightly have some problems with that word captor and the whole metaphor of a woman being like a city that can be taken, like an animal that can be broken, or actually just something that can be ground down so that you can have what you want as the lover. An interesting poem this one and one to which I hope you have a really strong response.